by third hour of the radio program, fourth hour on TechSags.com. It is our National Signing Day 2015 Recruiting Special Edition. And we are live inside a multi-set Lear Insurance Studios. Gabe Bach, Bryce Jones with you, Billy Lucci, Steve McKinney, Jordan Pugh inside the Lucci Lounge. Breaking it all down. Our phone number is 693-1150. You can text into the program if you'd like at 979-229-1939. Text such as this. How in the world do the recruiting services have Dwayne Thomas as a two-star? Do they even watch film? I think that's probably part of the issue. Well, my problem with that is, is correct your mistake. I understand two-star because think about college football teams didn't know he wasn't a two-star. They didn't start discovering him too late. But why is it ever too late to correct your mistake? Yeah. You watch exactly. a tape on that yeah. guy, he's not a two-star. So once you hear about him, mm-hmm. just because it's close to signing day doesn't mean you can't reevaluate. That's just it's no. whatever it is. It's laziness. <laughs> A&M got a good player. Yeah. We're waiting on Kyler Murray's. You know, his deal's going on right now, his ceremony. Uh, and then Roquan Smith's 10-20. Mm-hmm. Let's talk right now about Ronnie Elam. A long, rangy. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I didn't long, hear it. That was long, you, not me. A long, rangy corner. Okay, that if you think he is the, you, you, there's a reason why A&M beat out LSU because John Chavis, John Chavis wanted him there. So it's a great fit. He's exactly what he's looking for. Steve, you talked to me this morning uh, on your way in and said. He really jumped out at you when you went back and were watching guys. And I can tell you, talking to the guys uh, involved in this, he's one of the three guys that they think long-term are going to be maybe three of the best players in this class, Justin Evans, Ronnie Elam, and Kingsley Kiki, because you're talking upside and just just raw talent to mold. Ronnie Elam. Well, obviously I'm not a uh, defensive back expert as Jordan is, but uh, just from an, an old former offensive lineman's perspective, uh, when you look at a kid that's 6'2", maybe 6'3", mm-hmm. and as athletic as he is, great length, um, you know, what's not the love? I mean, you watch him on film, the guy goes, he's a ball hawk, man. He, yeah. he covers his guy, he goes for the ball. He's not just there to get in your face or try to knock balls down. I mean, the guy's trying to make plays. You know, right. he just seems like an SEC cornerback all day long. Yep. You know, he, he's, he definitely jumped out on the film. Too. Jordan, he's a guy to me that, that when LSU would have played A&M in the last couple of years, mm-hmm. they would have taken that guy, you know, with a couple yep. of years in the system, and they would have taken him, and they'd have lined him up from here to here in front of even a guy like Mike Evans and exactly. said, go, let's see what exactly. you got. What is it? What are your notes on, on this uh, highly recruited corner? Well, that's what I look at. You look at Chavis' defense. He wants man-to-man corners mm-hmm. and safeties who's just going to play the ball. That's exactly what he has. The great equalizer for a corner is long arms. Mm-hmm. And now he, has, he that's what he possesses. So you're looking for a man-to-man, in-your-face bumper run, that's your type guy. And you look in high school, man, I think career, 16 picks in his career. You can't beat that. <laughs> that's what you want. You want corners getting the ball back to the offense, and that's exactly what he brings. So you take him, you match him up with Chavis' defense, you match him up with the safeties that we got coming in and the safeties that we got now, and you play man-to-man style defense, Perfect fit. Perfect. And, Jordan, and Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong. The other thing is I'm watching the highlights mm-hmm. that reminded me of what really jumped off the film to me about. This kid tackles. Exactly. This is a cornerback yeah. that, that goes up and freaking tackles the back. I mean, right. he's not just a long, rangy guy that can cover. He can get up there and make plays on the perimeter. And you got to have And also exactly. in, t- in today's college football with such an emphasis of these offenses on those quick bubble screens. Yep. When you have a guy out there on the edge that can beat a receiver's block, it's deadly. We watched A&M during a couple of weeks there where they got eaten up mm-hmm. on the perimeter right. by Ole Miss, Mississippi Ooh. State, Alabama. Yeah. That that it, When you got guys like that out there, you, you can completely take away that part of the game. And as we saw uh, on the negative side of that, some teams, right. when you take that away, they're not the same offense. Man, now, if you look at the flip side of it, let's look at it like this. Now, if you... You know, you can build your team, or you, let's say your defense, from the front seven out. Mm-hmm. But if you have corners who can take away and eliminate receivers, you got safeties who can who can play the entire field, do you know how aggressive you can be as a play caller yeah. from That's that standpoint? Point. So you have your front seven, you got Miles Garrett, you know, you got a uh, uh, 
George coming. And who, all the guys coming in, guys who are great pass rushers, key, key, different guys like that. And then you got guys who can eliminate receivers. You talk about blitz packages, you know, uh, how aggressive, you know, zone blitzing. Just playing regular zones, guys manning up. That's you talking about bringing back the record. Yeah. That's it. That's, That's it. it right there. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of talk today, and there will be afterwards about A and M and, and some of the misses at corner. Mm-hmm. That guy they got right. might end up being as good or better than yeah. any of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you had all four of those guys out there today, and you asked John Chavis, "Hey, you could you could only have two of the four, I guarantee you, he would be one of the two Chavis took. So we need to think about that. And then what people forget is Nick Harvey was an elite prospect last year. You know, the weekend before signing day, he was in Austin on an official visit that had everyone really nervous. Nick Harvey, he showed flashes this year. But, yeah, there's going to be depth issues at corner. But by, by 2016, you know, if you put this guy in year two and Nick Harvey in year three on the field, uh, that that's – that's a real SEC exactly. caliber tandem. And that's if you don't get anything better. You know, they, they might go right. JUCO next year. They might exactly. get next year's version of Kendall Sheffield, the five-star. So I, depth is the issue. But at the very top, they might have a nice situation. Uh, Gabe Bryce, is there anything we need to go on? or Because we're yeah, ready to talk Kyler Murray. Absolutely. Why don't we do that? 693-1150, if you'd like to chime in on the Mac Resource Computers hotline, you can. You can text via the Commerce National Bank inbox at 979-229-1939. Good text rolling in. Many of them, you would think the battered Aggie syndrome would take effect. It hasn't really. It's a very quiet confidence just awaiting what Kyler, when that letter of intent is going to be official. Kyler Murray is an Aggie. It's just a matter of when he's going to sign the letter of intent and get it to Texas A&M. And, Bryce, it's got to be minutes away, as is the Roquan Smith decision. We're also awaiting the Sean Caper Smith letter of intent. Yeah, the, <clears throat> I don't think there's anything to worry about with Kyler Murray. Uh, that's just a formality of him getting the paperwork signed and sending it in. And, uh, you know, I know he wasn't feeling well last night, so it may have been a, a point of him wanting to sleep in a little bit and not wake up at 7 yeah. o'clock in the morning if he wasn't feeling too well. And then Roquan Smith going to come up here. What time is it now? It's supposed to happen in about eight minutes. Um, I'm expecting UCLA or, or Georgia, but you, you never know. I heard some, some good things last night. Uh, so, And then Dalen coming up and DeMarcus after that. So it's going to be interesting to see where these guys fall. But right now, Kyler just a formality. Don't, but, there's guys, no it's good to have another hour on the Bellucci hour. Let's I'll do tell you it like much. this. Let's do it like this. Let's do Kyler. And if, if that thing comes in while we're talking. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll hear it, and we'll just we'll just keep going. Perfect. Uh, and we'll Sounds we'll good. announce it as official. But we got five minutes for break, so let's do Perfect. Kyler. Kyler Murray. Let's talk Kyler Murray, and it's probably going to command more than five minutes. And, and yes. Hopefully, we'll get Jake Spavital on right. after uh, he can't talk about Kyler, obviously, till that's mm-hmm. done. But man, uh, I think he's the greatest high school football player in the, in the history of this state, which is incredible when you think right. about it. That's but a lot. but he is a you know he is a uh, he's a six, you know, six A state champion. Won two five five A state championships, mm-hmm. three undefeated seasons yeah. at, at, at the highest level, forty three and zero as a starting quarterback. It, it's it's insane, and the way he did it, he did it with flair. He did it with toughness. He did it by leading his team behind against teams like DeSoto and Skyline, some great high school football teams, as you know, Jordan. He did it with his arm. Yep. He did it with his legs. Uh, he did it as a leader. And I, I, I remember uh, Johnny Manziel told me uh, prior to that Chick-fil-A Bowl, he was watching Allen win the state title game, and, and uh, he told me, he said, he, he's the best high school quarterback I've ever seen, and he's better than, he's better than, uh, he's so much better than I was at that age. And Johnny said, this was before he was an Aggie, and you know, I said, wherever he goes, they will win a national championship. I don't care where it is. And, you know, that what they say, game recognizes game, right? And, yeah. and you guys as pro athletes, you're not quick to, to just heap the praise, especially when you're younger. As you get older, it gets a little easier. Uh, for him to say that and be such a fan of Kyler's, and then another guy who talked about him, uh, Kevin Murray has done, look, we talk about Kevin Murray, the proud father, and what a great job he's done in raising Kyler. 
But what a job he's done as, as a quarterback's coach, too, because I don't think I've seen a more polished, uh, game-ready quarterback coming in. He, he is a coach's dream. Yeah. And uh, even George Whitfield, who is in the same profession as Kevin and, and doesn't train Kyler, I remember having a conversation with him in Cleveland earlier this year where he said, you know what, I, I went to look at him and I wanted to go in with an open mind and, and not even meet him because I didn't want him to win me over first where I was biased. He goes, and he said, pound for pound, he's the best I've seen. <laughs> and he said right. there were throws I wanted to see him make, and he not only made them, but he made them better than most guys I've ever seen. Yeah. And, right. and so, I mean – just go on, fellas. You guys have watched him. We know what a big deal this was. This was a defining moment, not only for this class, but I think for the Kevin Sumlin era to keep him, uh, not only from going to Texas, but from originally from going to Oregon. Uh, you guys just rap about it. Well, you know, first off, I don't appreciate you showing him, you know, the highlights. Against Plano. Against Plano West, yes. you know. Yeah. You didn't have to do that. You know, He's <laughs> got plenty of other You know, it was a rival high school back then. But anyway. Now, you look at uh, Kyler, man, I mean, his resume speaks for itself. You know, then being there and watching him play. So I finally got to see him play for the first time at that game where they scored, what, 70 points maybe? I think he had six passing. I don't know what. It was a lot. <laughs> Let's put it yeah. that way. And, you know, when you watch him, he's special. That's the only thing that you can say about him is he's special. You know, you can rattle off stats. You can rattle off, uh, you know, completion, percent, all that stuff, man. At the end of the day, he's a winner. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The thing that I like about him the most and the thing that you hate about him the most playing defense is he keeps the play alive. So when you look at Manziel and what he did when he was here, the one thing that he was best at was keeping the play alive. Yeah. When you look at Kyler, he keeps the play alive, but Kyler keeps his focus downfield. And that's the one thing that I love because usually, he'll, you know, guys will take off, young guys take off running, but, man, he's, <laughs> he's delivering that ball. You know, it's on point. It's accurate. It's so accurate. And, you know, you look at the <laughs> – if we look at the recruiting front, you know, you talk about a shift in recruiting now. You know, this is something, man, that can have an impact. I'm talking about for the next two or three years, man. Yeah. Because yeah. now you got sure receivers. Especially. Now you look at Kyle Allen and you got Murray. If I'm a receiver, why not? If I'm a running back, why not? If I'm an O-lineman, why not? Because he's going to keep the play alive. He's going to make my job easier. Yeah. And so that's the impact that he has over the overall program. And that's what I think he brings to, to the Aggies. You know, the thing, um, obviously, he's an outstanding player. I mean, you right. can see his highlights and, you know, what Jordan said about seeing him in person, I've, I've heard that so many times because I've watched him on TV. You know, I, don't, I didn't watch every game he played. I watched the state championship games and his highlight reels. That's all I needed to see. Yeah. I mean, right. the kid's are amazing. But my brother, Sean, who, you know, goes to all these state championship games, he's like, Steve, you you got to see this guy in person. It's like watching Johnny. Yeah. It's so different from watching him on TV mm -hmm. than in person. He's and he said the same thing. He's like, I, I guarantee you, and this was like a year and a half, two years ago, whoever he signs with, they're going to win two national championships, and he's going to win at least one or two Heismans. And I was like, are you serious? I mean, this right. kid's like a junior, sophomore right. in high school, and he's just like singing his praises. I'll tell you what I love about him, too. He's so, when he walks into a room, all eyes are on him. He knows it. He's got that personality where if you're a lineman, if you're a defensive player, right. you want to follow him. Right. And that there, there's something about that. Those guys always win, mm -hmm. and they're rare. They don't lose. He hasn't lost a game. <laughs> he and really doesn't exactly. lose. And then yeah. in baseball, he's an amazing <laughs> baseball player, which right. to me, you know, you know what that tells me? He is a gifted athlete, obviously. Right. And, right. But if you're the, as good in baseball as he is, and you don't play it year-round like yeah, everybody does, right. it, it's not like when we were little kids, especially me mm -hmm. and you where you could play as many sports as you wanted and it was encouraged and mm -hmm. you didn't lose an advantage because mm -hmm. everybody played other sports. Right. Nowadays, if you don't play baseball year-round, you're yeah. going to have a hard time. Yeah, you can't keep and and to right. be arguably the best you know, non-pitcher position player in this state right. and, and not do it year-round is amazing. Right. And, and Kyler Murray, you know, he might be a first-round pick. Most people project him as one. Uh, but to me, to be that good at baseball and be that good with the stick, not only I think that speaks volumes about how mentally tough and focused this kid is as well. He's got every intangible you could ever ask for 
uh, at the position. All right, welcome back. Tech Zags Radio presented by Scott & White Healthcare. Same-day appointments at Scott & White. Go to sameday.sw.org. Our phone number is 693-1150. You can text at 229-1939. We're, uh, we're anticipating the arrived na- national letter of intent from Kyler Murray, so we still got that. Deshaun Caper-Smith. So two commits that haven't signed yet. And we're just awaiting those to become officially official. Here inside the Lear Insurance Studios, Gabe Bach, Bryce Jones, Billy Lucci, Jordan Pugh, and Steve McKinney. I don't know. We'll have to flip guys to to see who gets off when Demontre Moore comes in next segment. I'll take it. They got ice cream on. There you go. Ice cream. (laughs) Steve will be off. Jordan, who's been here since about 6.15 this morning, will hang around. Jordan, the ice cream will await you at 11 o'clock. Uh, Billy, you want to go big picture? Uh, You know, there's a lot during the interim, too, over the last month. And, Sumlin's delay for a defensive coordinator, and during the interim of Kyler Murray and what he's going to do, yeah, I think we learned a lesson about trusting the head coach. I believe Kevin Sumlin during all this. Yeah, I mean, I've been it's, we're being repetitive here because I've been banging that drum, as you know, Gabe, for a while. I mean, it, it's just and, and chill out. You're paying a guy five million dollars a year. Uh, all he's done since he's been here is in three years win 28 games in the SEC. And, and yeah. they had one bad three-game stretch where, where something was going on with that team and they kind of lost their way. But outside of three games in like 36, even in the losses, and literally all but one of them, that loss in Baton Rouge last two years ago, all but one came down to pretty much the final possession. Yeah. That's how competitive A&M's been in the toughest league and the toughest division in the country. He knew what he was doing all along in the coaching search, and it was so hard to bite my tongue when they were that close to getting Pat Narduzzi. Um, had had the open jobs not come up at Colorado State and then Pitt, they had him. They were within 24 hours of having him. They could have had Brett, uh, Bud Foster. They could have had DJ Durkin, who fans weren't as excited about for some sick reason, because watch what a great coordinator he is for, oh, by the way, he was good enough to be hired by Jim Harbaugh. And, and and then you, to end up with a guy that I think was the best guy they could have gotten because he's going to be here for a while. He's proven in the SEC and the SEC West. All he does is put great defenses on the field that produce all SEC, all American, and NFL draft picks in John Chavis. And all that hand-wringing was wasted because at the end of the day, uh, the head coach that you pay to run the program – did what you pay him to do, which is take AM yeah. one giant step closer to being an SEC and national title contender. Yeah. It was the same with Kyler Murray. Was it dicey there for a while? Yes, yes, it was. It certainly was. But they stayed the course. They had faith in Kyler and his family, and they never got frustrated. And that's what can happen sometimes. You know, you you have a moment of frustration, you might lose the kid. Mm-hmm. And they held, they hung in there. They're doing the same thing. Uh, with Dalen Mack, and it's, I think it's been a really nice uh, recruiting year where we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about Kevin Sumlin as the head of a program and as a head coach since the end of this season. Made some tough decisions, uh, made some great hires, and then is going to, you know, hopefully close on, on the state's two best players. So, yeah, Gabe, I think that's a great point. Just hang in there and, uh, at the end of the day, this class, I said at the start of the day, if A&M gets Dalen Mack today, keeps everyone they got, it's a great day. Not a good day, but a great day. Um, when I look at this class, they, they got a lot better on defense. Yeah. They added three guys that were considered, you could be in the argument, of the best player in the country at their position, quarterback, wide receiver, and D-tackle. That's after doing it at quarterback, wide receiver, and D-end last year. Yeah. Um, and and offensively, they just continued down the road. They've been continuing down, which is they're on track to continue to field the best offenses in the country. Yeah. And I think they're going to win the state recruiting. What are people yelling about? People are yelling in the other room right you know, now. Blue Bell's uh, got the ice cream. Do they really? Yeah, I think, I think that's what it is. It's either that yeah. or Roquan Smith just decided. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. To something. Yeah. <laughs> they sounded frustrated, actually. Yeah. Sound like... So, guys, I mean – now he's in the process. Where, where do you guys uh, come uh, off on this class, top to bottom? I mean, it, it's such it's, a... It's very strong. If you look at every position and you go through each one, I feel like we hit a great player at each position. Some of them multiple. At offensive line, I think we got two or three great ones. Yeah. Um, but you, you really addressed a lot of needs. Yeah. I mean, 
people think, oh, well, we need, we could have used one more cornerback. Oh, that was such a big deal. Sure, yeah, everybody can use more cornerbacks. Yeah. But I'm telling you, we got a great one, Ronnie Elam. Yep. And Deshaun Capers, we don't know. We're not sure what he's going to turn out to be. Yep. But he was the Gatorade player of the year or whatever exactly. in Louisiana, so the kid's an athlete. Let's exactly. talk about him for a minute because we might not have time after mm-hmm. all, you know, especially if Roquan Smith and then we want to talk some Dalen before the end mm-hmm. of the show. Uh, Deshaun Caper Smith, quarterback, mm-hmm. athlete. Uh, he's done it all, quarterback, receiver, running back. DB, Roquan Smith, we just got word Roquan Smith to UCLA. Okay. So, you know, disappointing, yeah. though, because – now, A&M got in there late, so this is a different deal. But two years in a row, A&M's lost a, a linebacker on signing day to UCLA. Credit them. They're doing a great job yeah. of recruiting. But How'd that one work out, by the way? Well, <laughs> that was that was Zach Whitley who transferred, but they also lost Kenny Young who played and started for them. When are these in-state kids going to learn? When you go that far away from home, it doesn't always yeah. work out like a yes. fairy tale. Yeah, yes. but more times than not, you're begging to come back to state. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's it, every year. It was a deal though. A and M was so close yeah. to going and pulling a Georgia linebacker mm-hmm. from the deep south to A and M. Well, I thought was you said Dwayne Thomas on par with Le Malik. Right. I think Roquan Smith was better. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that one hurts. That one hurts. Yeah, A and M again. It wasn't somebody that they had in hand. They were making a yeah. late charge. They just mm-hmm. weren't able to overtake some teams that were in there but the it's nice time. at least we're at a point now as a program where we can go out and nationally recruit great kids. point exactly yep. you know yep. 10 15 years ago who were we signing who were we ever going after the best linebacker in georgia and had a shot at exactly it? No. that's so a great point. we're on a whole different level of recruiting now and you know what next year with with some of these new coaches and their ties nationally and jeff banks and jake spavadol what they've done in arizona um mm-hmm. the natural ties that they've got going right now in louisiana but john chavis Watch his recruiting impact in Louisiana, Georgia, and and where he's from over there in Tennessee. Yeah. Watch his recruiting impact in those three states next year. I would I would I would lay heavy odds because they almost got about three guys from Tennessee this year. Mm-hmm. I would lay heavy odds that Texas A and M ends up getting a player from each. Well, Louisiana we say that, but I, I bet A and M will get a, a two or three guys. Maybe even four from Georgia and Tennessee next year, and they'll probably all be on the defensive side of the ball. Well, when you look at it, you know you talk about the buildup of the program since Summer came. What was it? Twenty-eight wins yeah. in three years, undefeated in bowl games. You know, everybody wants instant gratification. You know, you hire, you get a hire, and it's like, okay, let's win now. Yeah. But people don't understand. You have to build that, and so part of that is you know building wins, but then it's also recruiting. And then you know you touched on it with the national recruiting now. So now you can go in the homes and be like, hey, we have this program. We're on the verge, and A&M's right there. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I'm in the SEC, there's a couple teams I'm afraid of. a and is one of them. You know, because you don't know. Right now, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. But you see the you see the fire. <laughs> that yeah. They're getting ready to you burn. You see it trending in, exactly. in that direction. Exactly. So you add the athletes, you know, from this recruiting class to what they already have now. And last year, it's youth. It was a youth movement. And you're going to get the highs and lows with a youth movement. That's what's going to happen. It's going to happen with this class. But you're talking about something that you build over time, it's dangerous. This yeah. is big boy recruiting yeah. now, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It's, it's a whole you're different You're not going to win them all, but you yeah. know, at least you're in the, in the conversation. Yeah. At the end of the day, you need to address your needs, yeah. and you need to address them with, with better players than you've had. In other words, address your needs, improve your roster, hopefully at, at every position that you're, that you're recruiting, and keep pace. Right. Keep pace with the guys you're trying to beat because – A&M is still behind overall talent to the majority of the teams that they're playing against in the SEC. Not all of them, but the majority. Mm -hmm. So you look at the seniors A&M lost. You look at the seniors Alabama and LSU, the guys they lost. They're losing much better players. Mm -hmm. So they're coming back down to you. So if you recruit even or close to them, you're still gaining ground on these programs. And that's the way you have to look at it. You don't look at the ranking today and go, and Alabama got the number one class A and M was eighth, and we've lost ground. Right. No, you've gained Game ground. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Six nine three eleven fifty on the phones, guys. I've got a little bit of news here. Our own columnist Olin Buchanan is in Allen High School, and I asked him, "Has Kyler signed yet? You have any news?" He says, "No." He says there are seventeen Allen athletes at a table right now. There's not a sign of Kyler right now, and yeah. I think it'd be important to point out that we all got word from Kevin Murray that he uh, would love to come on our program today, but he was feeling very sick last night, and so that yeah. could ha- attribute to it. I, I don't think it's time for any sort of 
uh, worry or panic or anything like that. But yeah. Kyler is not uh, on site right now signing yeah. his letter with 17 other Allen Eagles. So yeah. that is important to point out as well. Okay. As we go to break, we'll take another time out. We'll come back. Demontre Moore should be here within minutes. I just got off the phone with him. Steve McKinney, maybe we'll come back with you. On the other side of the break for a few minutes, if we don't, man, it's been fun. I've really enjoyed having you and uh, an upgrade from Seth McKinney. If he's going to go 35 minutes and you're going to go two hours, we're going to say, bring on more Steve McKinney. How about that? (laughs) I I agree with you. That's good stuff. We appreciate it. We're going to close that. We're down the stretch here, Bryce. Uh, Billy Lucci, Jordan Pugh, and Demontre Moore are going to join us. And at some point along the way, if Kyler becomes official, Deshaun Caper-Smith, obviously we'll break that down. And Demontre Moore, I want to remind you, will be at Aguilan Outfitters, the mega store on University Drive from 5 to 7 today for a free autograph signing. All right, welcome back. It is 1038, Sports Radio 1150, The Zone. Gabe Bach, Bryce Jones, Billy Lucci, Steve McKinney, Jordan Pugh, and we are awaiting an in-studio appearance from Giants defensive end and former Texas A&M defensive great Demontre Moore inside the Lear Insurance Studios on National Signing Day. And Kyler Murray is there. Olin Buchanan had texted us and Twitter. Dress, dress in Aggie gear. Oh, there you no go. Less. So, like I said, I, I figured it was, it's just a formality. Wasn't feeling good. Probably slept in late. They have a lot of guys signing at Allen. Like, I think we were talking about they have 17 guys signing at Allen. When you, you don't have that, you, you're almost every starter at Allen is signing a Division One scholarship. <laughs> and I know they have some juniors starting, too, that are going to be signing oh, at D1 next year. So, that's uh, – a huge accomplishment there for Allen. It's pretty good when you can bring guys off the bench and maybe your backup running back or quarterback gets some committed. sort of yeah, gets yeah he's probably committed, committed somewhere. somewhere. Whether you know D three doesn't matter. He's probably committed somewhere. A couple of stats for you guys, including Kyler Murray, but not including Dalen Mack, who we anticipate will sign with A and M. Seven of the top twenty players in Lucci's forty four Aggies. Eleven of the twenty one high school commits are ranked inside the top two fifty of ESPN's three hundred, and eleven of the twenty one high school commits played in an all American game, be it Under Armour, US Army, or Semper Fidelis. Luch, yeah. if we want to continue the conversation, I mean we hadn't talked much about Mac, I don't think, have we? No, let's talk about Dan Mac for a minute because I, you know, all sign I, here's the thing. If everything went through from you know, Two nights go to today without uh, without incident. I, I'd be it'd be a pleasant surprise. But Dalen, you know, all signs have pointed to him uh, coming to A and M. Uh, do we have Demontre Moore in the house? It's on. I hear it. Oh, it, now it's off. All right, Billy's mic was on, but now it's off. Did the battery just go out? Okay. Like this. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, uh, Dalen Mack, I, I, close. if if Dalen can, there you go. It, to me, if AM closes with Dalen, uh, they're closing with the best defensive lineman that I've seen this state for Duke, the best defensive tackle, because Miles Garrett was of that caliber as well. Uh, exclude some really good ones, but I'm going to go all the way back to the back to back of, of uh, Tommy Harris and Ty Warren. But I'm going to go past Tommy Harris, who was a first-round pick and an All-American, because Tommy, at the same age, was like in the 270 range. Dalen Mack hey, you know, plays football at about 320 on a 6'2 frame. Yeah. Uh, he is the closest thing. I'm trying to think of a D tackle. Let me, let me throw a name thought, out there to yeah. you and see if this name rings a bell. A guy named Sam Adams. Yes. <laughs> Coming yeah. to Texas. He's not bad. Yeah. As a true freshman, I believe he played as a true freshman. Yes, he did. He, this guy, Sam, had an amazing – Explosive, explosiveness off the ball. Great first step. Very explosive. I see. When I look at Dalen, that's that's the name that jumps out at me. The wow. kid just fires off the ball. He's got a great first step real quick. Yeah. Big and quick is a very dangerous combination yes, of defensive yes, tackles. Yes, it is. And yes, it is. You can tell yeah. how strong And he wrecks havoc, man. We know he, if you're in the backfield that much, you know, that's what you want to do. You just want to destroy everything and, just be, and cause chaos. You know what I mean? And I think that's his biggest asset. The first step, you know, great hands, quickness, and chaos. That's what he brings. Yeah. You see what these teams with these elite, next-level <laughs> interior defensive linemen can do uh, to, to an offense by themselves mm-hmm. oftentimes. And if you think that he's going to be doing it <laughs> alongside Miles freaking Garrett, yeah, who's also probably the best defensive end <laughs> I've seen since Sam Adams at right. A&M when he was, you know, because that's what he played in that 3-4. Right. Mm-hmm. But – you put those two together. Which one are you going to double team? <laughs> good luck on Pat. Yeah, who are you going to double team? And Dalen yeah. is a guy who, who, when I look at him, 
Galen's a guy who, uh, the, what an appropriate nickname he has for himself, and I think it's so appropriate, the Mack Truck. Yeah, right. And look at Michael Bennett in the Super Bowl, right. one of your old teammates. Right. What he did playing inside, he dominated a good portion of, of the Super Bowl right. because they couldn't block right. him. When exactly. you've got a guy there in the middle, and Steve, you know this, when you can't block a guy, uh, you're going to have a long day doing anything because it starts with running the football, and, and one guy can take a lot of that away if he's as good as Matt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and as an offensive guard center type, playing against these type of defensive tackles, the reason that they cause you trouble, because the big 6'4", 325-pound guys, they're not always the hardest to block. Mm-hmm. Even though they may be bigger than you and stronger than you, they have a lot more to grab yeah, and hold right. on to. Exactly. When you got a guy that's six foot, low to the ground, great leverage player like him mm-hmm. that's quick and strong and powerful, they create a lot of lot of problems for big, you know, six three, six five Not offensive Casey guards. Hampton. Casey Hampton, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, yeah. you know, Casey when he wasn't so overweight yeah, with Pittsburgh. Got really, yeah. Casey at Texas early in his career. That's the type of player he is. You know, a little bowling ball wrecking type guy that you're not going to knock off the ball. Now let's say you get Mac. And you got Kiki. So it's like, who plays the one, who plays the three? Yeah. <laughs> and it's really interchangeable. Yeah. yeah. And then you, they can play both. Exactly. Then you add, what, Lockhart into it. So you got Gar- uh, Garrett, you got Kiki, and then if Mac signs, and uh, Lockhart. You're talking about, that's just, that's a rotation yeah. itself. Then you go. That's <laughs> one rotation. They we can start doing this exactly. year. Exactly. Starting games as a true freshman. Right. Deshaun Hall, uh, we talked, you know, who, who might come into his own under Chavis mm-hmm. as a junior. Uh, Quaylen Cunningham and Jarrett Johnson, who both flashed exactly. a lot yeah. this year, and that doesn't even count for your depth. Exactly. Hardrick Walker had a nice bowl game mm-hmm. at the end of his sophomore season. He's a three hundred pounder. Uh, Deshaun Washington, three hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. You're finally able to do what Auburn did to A and M two years ago, mm-hmm. what Alabama always does, right. what LSU always did under Chavis. Where you look up and you're you're on the other sideline, you're going. What the hell's going on? Like, these right. guys are just rolling dudes exactly. out here. And then it allows guys like Daylin and Miles and, and and guys like mm-hmm. that to stay fresh. Exactly. So in yeah. the fourth quarter, you're an alignment, yep. and instead of wearing these teams down, you're right. like, God, this, these guys just keep coming at me. Rolling you know? new fresh Why legs. Why and Daylin exactly. Mack is coming off the rock on every snap. Mm-hmm. So right. it – you love what they're doing up yep. front if they can cap it off right. with, with Dalen. Six nine three eleven fifty. Demontre Moore is in studio. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll get Demontre mic'd up. I can also let you know that Deshaun Caper Smith of Warren Easton High School in New Orleans is in state champion. I believe this past year, right at Warren yeah. Easton. The numbers no, he no, put they, up, state runner up, state runner up. The numbers game. he put up were absolutely staggering. Four thousand three hundred thirty three yards passing and fifty touchdowns. Bryce, two interceptions. Two interceptions for DCS. Also, 1,318 yards rushing and 22 DDs. Not bad for a guy that's not going to be asked to play qu- uh, quarterback at the next level. He'll be asked to come in and play on the defensive side. Yeah, and his junior year, he actually played corner and uh, watched him go up against Speedy Knoll uh, against yeah. Edna Carr and had a pretty good had a good game. I think Speedy only had two catches and no touchdowns. So Deshaun's definitely capable of playing that corner spot and did up until this year when he played QB. It is 10.50. Welcome back. Final segment of the signing day edition of Tex Ags Radio presented by Scott & White Healthcare. Gabe Bach, Bryce Jones, Billy Lucci, the McKinney brothers, Jordan Pugh, Demontre Moore now joining us inside the Lear Insurance Studios. Our phone number is 693-1150. You can text in at 229-1939. While you tune in and listen to this interview, be caller 12 right now on the hotline. It's time to end the day with Double Daves. We do it every day at the end of the program. Caller 12 right now at 693-1150. We'll hook you up with a couple lunch buffets from Double Daves Pizza Works. Serving Aggieland in the entire region since 1984. Order online at doubledaves.com. Quick note, Bryce Kyler is signing his papers yeah, as right As we now. speak, I saw a picture of Penn touching the paper, so it shouldn't be much longer before his uh, letter of intent is actually faxed in. Outstanding. Much more on that and more at the Bellucci Hour from noon to 1 at the tap and right here on Sports Radio 1150 The Zone with Bryce and Billy. And with that, we welcome in Demontre Moore. Luch, you got Demontre Moore over there, and Demontre, you're going to be at Aguiland Outfitter signing autographs five to seven at the Mega Store on University Drive, and you're at sc- in school right now. What does it mean to you to spend the spring back here trying to work toward that degree? Uh, it means a lot. Just uh, coming back here, uh, I made that promise to my mother uh, and my father, and then also Miss Lee and uh, Coach Sherman uh, that 
you know, it's, it's this opportunity presented itself that I would always come back and get my degree. And so um, I'm actually not that far out, so I wanted to go ahead and get a, a big chunk of it knocked out. So, And then also in the, uh, in the same token, I get to work out with uh, Coach uh, Larry Jackson and be around the team and, you know, just be with them. Oof, going I'll off. tell you what, <laughs> just, to, just to let you know, Demontre, you were one of my favorite guys to cover because uh, when you are, you are. Because <laughs> when, uh, yeah. when you come in and, uh, and, and you see how, you how, how far a guy goes in, <laughs> right. in, that, in right. his career. And then, by the way, Leckler said he's got a bone to pick with you too. <laughs> Injury, he's too old. You can't be touching those old guys and on the. You know, he's a punter. He's not used to that. Hey man, I got to get my strike somehow. Man. Yeah, it's a nice play. Yeah, I got nice play. And I grew up a Giant right. fan, so you know. Um, but Demontre. Real quick, I want to start out by talking about. We've got a few minutes here, so I got three main things I want to talk to you about. Your recruitment. AM's got a lot of guys today that Jordan and I sat here and said are very raw, gifted athletes that are so far from the finished product on the defensive side of the ball. I think you, you those are the guys you win with. Those are the guys you want, those guys with the upside. Uh, when did you, I mean, Coach Sherman saw something in you before you were even a full-time starter, when did you realize, man, I'm really starting to come into my own and this football thing is starting to come together for me? Mm, I'd probably say I realized that in high school, but uh, when it was really just that moment was uh, probably what was at the Louisiana uh, Tech game. Oh, yeah, with the three uh, sports fumbles. Yeah, uh, that game. I was like, you know what? I can actually hang in this league. And, yeah. You know, um, I wasn't even supposed to be playing. I was supposed to be red-shirted. And, you know, all these, you know, just people put all these labels on me and then to have the game that I had that game and then, you know, to play behind Vaughn Miller and then people actually know my name and then get mentored by him and then playing with Sean and all them. Like, it just kind of, like, just started being a snowball effect. Yeah. So I say it probably started with losing on the take game, honestly. And how'd your season go in New York this year? Uh, you really start, I, I thought start, you started to see the Demontre Moore uh, – that was a, a first team All Americans junior year at AM. Uh, um, it, uh, it went pretty good. Um, uh, oh. Kyler, Murray <laughs> Kyler Murray is in. Murray. Have you heard that There's rejoicing yeah. in the streets. <laughs> Kyler <laughs> Murray <laughs> official of the Aggies. I was like, hold on, who's that? Uh, exactly. But um, <laughs> it, went, it went well. Um, it started off a little slower than what I thought it would, and then. Um, you know, it, it picked up, uh, you know, due to some injuries, unfortunate uh, for the people in front of me. But, yeah. you know, uh, I, I think I stepped up to the plate, seized the opportunity. And then as I started, my playing time started to increase. You know, my stats started to increase. And so, you know, I just started to get back to my old ways. A, a guy who is uh, kind of following in the footsteps that Vaughn and yourself kind of paved the way and, and had one of the best freshman seasons I can ever remember seeing. <laughs> Uh, Miles Garrett, I know you got a chance to watch some AM football this year. What'd you think of number 15? How good can he be? Uh, hey, he's phenomenal. Uh, he's proven it, uh, beating a freshman sack record and not just beating it, but killing it. Yeah. And then, you know, just to play at that, that high intensity at such an early age, it just it speaks volumes. And, you know, you got to actually think about it that you have, you know, possibly two to three more years of this kid. And, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, if he stays all four years, like, it's, it's going to be amazing to see what he develops into because he has every uh, – he has Coach Sumlin. He has, uh, you know, uh, Coach Revis that just came in that, um, that's that been uh, around successful defense and ends and produced people like, you know uh, – Mingo. You know, Montgomery. Mingo, Sam Montgomery and all of them. And then you got Coach Jackson with the strength program, like, you know, the – the sky's the limit for this kid. 260 pounds, 255, ran a 4.46 the other day in vertical jump, 40 inches. What does the A&M defensive it's front look me. like? If it, <laughs> what? what does the A&M defensive front look like if later today we find out that they're going to be lining up Miles Garrett alongside Dalen Mack? Man, that would be, that'd be a scary combination. You know, uh, just to see once they get in there and if, you know, they're fortunate enough to get him, mm-hmm. like, that would be crazy. Uh I think, you know, I think back to when it was me and Spencer, uh, I wouldn't have as much success if it wasn't for Spencer Neely. Yeah, like, yeah, that he, yeah. like, his senior year, he just killed the defensive tackle with him just uh, killing the guards and getting such a pass rush. Like, we had help. So, like, for him to get somebody else, if that does happen, like, that would, that would speak volumes. And then not to even to think about the kids that you still got there right now, yeah. you know, Lonzo Justin Williams. Man, 
Justin Manning, Alonzo Williams, uh, Deshaun Hall, he's coming back and he's working out and he's getting stronger. And I was actually in the weight room with him the other day and he was looking like a lot bigger. And just to see all the competition, like, it's, it's, it's impressive and, you know, I think they're going to be something nice next year. I want to tell you something. You know, this year when A&M was struggling on defense, you know, those that three-game stretch where they were struggling as a team, this yeah. should mean something to you. Coach Sumlin showed a tape, and it was an effort tape, and he was showing you uh, and, and showing this current football <laughs> team and saying this is how you play defense. So uh, I think that was a, one of the highest compliments you can give right. a compliment. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember it. at one point in time, I, w- I was nowhere to be it found. Wasn't that day. Way, right? <laughs> no, I remember Coach Sumlin was like, I don't think you're going to play here, man. He's just, he's just a 30 down uh, play guy. And he was like, I never believe it. And then we were actually talking about it, you know, uh, end of my junior year. And he was just like, it's crazy to see how you went from 30 plays to, you know, uh, when we played Louisiana Tech again. Yeah, like uh, I played 109 snaps, I believe. Uh, wow. And wow. I only came out one play because of my helmet. And then, you know, Sean Porter played right. uh, 120, uh, 20, 30 around that uh, snap. So, like, that speaks volumes with Coach uh, LJ. And so, like I said, and then we just wanted to prove something. Yeah. And so, like I said, with the... With me working out with the guys now and just seeing them, I think they're starting to get that energy and that feel back to it. So that's why I said I'm excited for this spring and see how they do in spring football. Demontre, right, Demontre, yeah. thank you for coming out. We appreciate Jordan. Thank you. Thank Four you. hours, man. Four and, hours. And killed it. Amazing I, I job do it today. Again, man. Appreciate you having me. Gabe, I know we got to yeah. go. This was fun. This was really fun. Uh, it was a great one. Demontre, we got to get you in probably for 30 minutes or an hour and do this the right way and really get into your story. I think man. it's very unique. If, you, if I can get an invite early enough, you know, <laughs> that'd be great. All right. Happy <laughs> Johnson. Happy it's birthday to Jaworski Lane, uh, Kevin Matthews today, a couple players, to the whole crew for making it possible today. So many names, so many people behind the scenes that made this thing roll. Ronnie worked, he was the last one here yesterday on his birthday to make this thing work. All the guests, Bryce, Billy, you name it, Jordan Pugh, the McKinney brothers, everybody for making it possible. We got a lot more. The Baluchi Hour Lunch coming up at noon, and we're back to break it down even further tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock.